how would I compare an Indian ringneck and an African gray? Hi, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrot Bliss Bond. Please be sure to get your copy on Amazon today so that you have your Parrot Bliss Handbook. Everything that you need to provide a good quality life for your parrot so that you can have quantities of bliss. Today I am joined by my husband Chris and my Indian ringneck Milo as well as Adonis, our African Grey. How would I compare these two birds from totally different continents? You know, they are so interesting. Visually, they're both stunning, especially if they ever look at the camera. Can you look at the camera? Um, Milo's coloring is, of course, a, um, what do you call it? You know, color that's been bred in, so it's not a color that she would be normally in nature, as you, I'm sure, know, Indian ringnecks are usually a beautiful, beautiful green. But Milo's stunning color of this powder puff blue is, at the dentist, is um, definitely something that it has been bred for. Um, as you know, are you talking this morning? Adonis, our African gray, she is your normal, traditional colors. I don't know if you've ever noticed this before. This is a, <coughs> I think, a fascinating <coughs> <coughs> detail, excuse me, about African grays. Mm, they will have a different amount of gray on them. Have you ever noticed that some Afri <coughs> African grays are lighter gray? I don't know what happened to my voice. And some African grays are darker gray and it actually depends <clears throat> on where in Africa they are from. We call these CAGs Congo African Grays, but I think they're from more places than just the Congo. Um, since some of their size and some of their color depends on where they're from. Are you talking this morning? I think she said bird. Mm -hmm. Are you a good bird? Hello, Don. Well, Let's compare a couple of key things. Talking ability. Unfortunately, since Milo is female, hence no beautiful ring around her neck, Milo is not a talker. <clears throat> In my house, if she was a talker, she would talk. She's a dentist, but not a talker. Of course, African greys within the citizene or parrot family, they take the prize for being able to mimic sound the best for being so quiet. And so if you can hear her, she's saying hi, she said bird. <clears throat> I'm not sure if she's saying anything else. Hi, how are you this morning? Hi, how are you? And in the background you hear our Cape parent who is also from the African continent. She's chitter chattering back there. Milo is from Asia, so she's an Asiatic bird. And um, Asiatic birds and African greys have one thing in common. Generally speaking, they tend to be independent birds. Probably the Asiatic parrots like Milo being more independent. That means that when it comes to your lifestyle, <clears throat> if you have heard people talking about parrots and talking about how you need to have hours and hours to spend with your parrot every day. That's not gonna be so true for a bird like Milo. She does want some time, some time engaging. You can see that she loves being my dentist and she does like to spend some time with me, but neither of these birds are gonna be cuddle birds. This is not one of the parrots that God put a teddy bear into or the universe. These are like more independent, aloof. Look, do you like people to go around petting you? That's what I think if Milo could talk, that's what she would say. I don't either. You know, a little bit of petting's okay, but hello, what do you think I a teddy bear? That's what Milo would say. So one of the things, unfortunately, that I think that happens is a lot of people, they bring an Indian ringneck into their life, into their home, Maybe an African too, probably not the same degree as an Indian ringneck, but I think this 
probably happens with African greys as well. <clears throat> they bring this bird into their home hoping to have a real loving, bonded companion that they can hug and cuddle. And I understand. I was visiting a pet shop and they had a blue and gold macaw. It was just a baby and I picked it up, but I was kind of scared because, you know, with a bird you don't know, you should always be a little scared. And I was like, I want to hug you. I want to be able to hug a parrot. Well, aside from being little, both of these parrots aren't really the hugging parrots. My macaws are. They love to cuddle, maybe not exactly be hugged, but they certainly love that engagement. So if your lifestyle is such that you want like the teddy bear parrot, I don't think either of these are your teddy bear parrot. If your lifestyle is such that you're working a lot and you don't have a lot of time for um, really engaging and stuff, you know, this one of these might be really good for you. I do think that an African Grey would require more time. Also, we adopted our Greys as adults, which means we didn't have them when they were really young. And that's when a lot of bonding can really happen. So our parrots are already, you know, our African Greys already a little like, uh, you know, let me, I'll sit on your arm, I'll talk to you, I'll let you know when I'm done and I'm almost there. So I don't think that's necessarily typical of an African Grey. It may be extremely typical from my experience of an adult Grey. When it comes to food, our next category, we'll do in one end and out the other. When it comes to food and poops, a parrot like an Indian ring neck is really easy. On the one hand, both of these birds are going to require fresh vegetables every day and the pelleted diet because that pelleted diet just gives them everything they need to keep them happy and healthy. After that, the buck stops there with Milo and Milo is easy to take care of. She's, what are you, like between 150 to 250, what, I think 200 grams, I forget, something like that. Whereas <coughs> a <coughs> African Grey is gonna be like 350 to four, 450, so about twice the size. Mwah. Twice the size and half the tail uh, length. Yes, I know. This is, I love you, I love you, mate with me. <coughs> so I'm always very careful to only pet her head because I don't want to give her any inappropriate signals and rouse up her hormones more. I know, I love you, but mwah, I'm not your mate. Yes, I know pretty eyes. She's flashing her pretty eyes and she's going like this. Aren't you? Hello? So, diet. Um, African greys are going to require additional nut fat. That means that on a daily basis, somehow or another, you need to get some appropriate fat into their diet because Cheetos, you know, they don't grow in trees on Africa, so that's not something that Adonis is used to. Instead, Adonis is going to need things like nuts, walnuts, almonds. Um, what else do you like? Maybe we avoid peanuts because they have aflatoxins. Um, maybe some pistachios, maybe some Brazil nuts. And or she gets some hemp oil on her food every morning to make sure that she's getting all of the good and healthy fats that she needs in her diet. Now, when it comes to dander, parrot dander, because I don't know if you're familiar and I don't know if you've heard, there is something called parrot dander. It is a very fine white snow, if you will, a very fine little white mist. A parrot like Adonis, um, an African gray, is gonna create parrot dander. So I would research if you have any problems with like asthma or anything that may not be such a good choice. All parrots are going to create some dander, but Milo isn't going to create as much. Adonis and African Greys, they're also messier birds. You can say that it's because they are twice the size, but my Amazons aren't quite so messy. These guys are poopsters, whereas really um, Indian ringnecks are a lot easier to clean up after. You need to clean their cage also, obviously. It's just that at double the size, 
with an African gray, I think you need to clean three times as often. So that's something really to be aware of because that is going to mean that you're going to need to be, you know, you know you're going to put need to put more time into really maintaining a nice, healthy environment for them that's clean. We've talked about their ability to talk. Let's talk about sound. African greys are these amazing chill birds. This is uh, Adonis a little freaked out because an airplane went by overhead. Yep, that's as freaked out as she gets. Now, Milo's more used to the airplanes flying overhead. The cat just walked by, so Milo kind of flinched. But um, Milo's, you know, she's, she's going to take off and fly and be freaked out far quicker than an African gray. She's also going to screech and make noises. Sometimes in my videos when you hear, ah, I can't mimic her well. Um, you know, sometimes that's her. Why? Because she's a parrot. And that's reason enough to make a lot of noise. She's actually being really quiet, which is nice for the video. Um, so when it comes to sound level, well, I think both of these could be apartment parrots. I would feel more comfortable with an African Grey. They're, they're, I just don't think your neighbors are going to complain at all. Or if you have any kind of business at home where you need to be in front of Zoom or something like that, and you need not to have squawking in the background, you're going to probably prefer a messy bird that's much quieter. And it's not to say that they're super messy, it's just to say that you are going to be cleaning one. So we've talked about all sorts of things. Ultimately, I think that ooh, what you choose might depend quite a bit on your lifestyle. Um, we have not found Milo to be a one-person bird. The African Greys, they can be. And which one would you say is more family friendly, like if you have kids? Between them. These two. Oh, between these two? Probably, hmm, I don't know. I, neither one of them. Are I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say neither of them take the family friendly top five positions. And one of the reasons for it is maybe African Greys, when you get them when they're babies, maybe they could be super family friendly. But man, they've got these hook bills that just latch on, and when they decide to bite, they bite. And so I think that if I had a young child, I, I would not let them go around the African Grey. Unless I had this really calm child that, you know, isn't gonna poke the bear and isn't gonna grab, you know, the mouth and, you know. They can be tricksters so, too. So. Yes. Oh, that's true. African greys are known for being tricksters. They're known for doing this switch and bait where they put their head down like they want you to pet them and then they flip up and bite you. So you want to be aware of that. Incredible birds, incredibly smart, funny as all get out. When we call the dog, the African helps us. What, what do we do? We go, hey, Suki, and, and... Zeus goes, Zeus, who's our male, goes, come here, come here. Come yeah. here. So then Zeus starts calling him. So they're they're smart. They know contextually when things go with what. It's it's amazing. So it just sort of depends on your lifestyle. It depends on who's at home, how much time you have for your parrot, all sorts of things like that. But don't forget, if you want a really affectionate, fluffy, lovey parrot, I would keep searching. If you want a parrot where you can really have your own life and you don't have to worry, like that you're not being there for your parrot, consider one of these two. Thank you so much for joining us in this feathered video. Please be sure to comment below. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do. I'm trying to hit a golden thousand dollar, thousand, thousand subscriber mark, at which point I'll be able to do some updates as well. Ah, there's the Indian ringneck sound. And with that, we will call it a wrap. Thank you for joining us.